Well folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today is going to be a Dewalt day. We'll start off with this one. as a nail gun sent in. Must be at least a month ago, if not more. Needing a driver assembly. It's ordered a long time and it's only just arrived in, so I need to get this out of the way first. The fella's waiting long enough for this. I need to get it back to him as soon as possible. What's wrong with it? It's a firing pin. Actual driver assembly, this piece here. Gun's working, doing everything it should. It's just not f firing an actual nail. Pull the trigger, she's just clicking instead of shooting. So that there is generally going to be the driver assembly. You can tell straight away it's actually gone. See the metal here, this ridge. See the way she's shiny at the top. That's where the actual driver assembly has been bottoming out on the flywheel. So what that's actually doing is sitting above this flywheel. When she gets up to speed, running high speed, pull the trigger. Solenoid pulls back here and pushes the axis roller down, puts us down on top of the flywheel. She then grabs it and throws it forward. What it's doing now, instead of engaging in these here slots on the actual driver, the top of the flywheel is just touching the top of the driver unit here. So it's not getting enough friction to be thrown. It's just making a clicking sound. So that needs to go. At last, finally have a new one. Before we do anything else, I think I'll just give that a quick wee clean as well. Just clean out this housing. So that there's all just metal dust from the flywheel. That can be a little bit slippy if it's cast, if there's any cast or anything, or carbon build up. That can actually be a little bit. Give it a little bit of lubrication to be honest if there's any carbon on that which you don't want on the actual flywheel so we'll clean that off just in case that's what better looking you can clean the housing you can wash out with whatever whatever you want i'm using kerosene make sure that it's bone dry when you're finished no matter what you're using there could be oils still on it and you do not want to get any oil near this flywheel or driver at all it's friction driven it's thrown using friction any oil is going to destroy the friction, it's going to render the gun useless. That's the main downside of these here Dewalt guns, never get any oil near them. So if you are cleaning that out, make sure it's bone dry. Change this part, isn't all that complicated. Just down inside of here. Like that pump for a bit of axis, so that you can actually lift up this axis. To help lift it, just back out these screws, just a half a turn. You can lift that up. And it's just a matter of lining this up. Got these here rods inside and springs. Feed the actual pin into the holder down here. So you can push this back, hold it with your finger, then take your end assembly, push that on. Fairly simple to do, but it's a wee bit complicated the first time you do it. Just holding everything in place mainly, but very doable for a home repair. And just make sure these screws are all tight. Because from the shooting can create vibrations, it can loosen them off fairly easily. And there's your pin back in again. Also just make sure your springs inside aren't broken, they're nipped or cracked starting to roll over each other make sure you place them as well and that steel pin just pushes on that washer jams it in place there's nothing more complicated than that 
and then this part here let's get that really just sitting on there and it just drops back in your battery retainer first your battery contacts make sure your switch is down in place this here into the top of your switch for your lock push them in together make sure your wires aren't going to catch in any of the screw holes here when you put it together again and then don't lose a little leaf springs little springs just drop into here there seems to be one in this one slide switch then hook it onto your switch itself first and drop the two in together that should be her stick your cover on you should be good to go just make sure everything's lining up don't have any gaps. Screw it all together. Now I must the dismantling of this here because this is actually in that long. I can't even remember if I started making this video. Mightn't even have bothered, but actually open it to begin with. It's literally just taking these screws out. Taking the screws out and taking the two countersunk screws off the back cover and pulling the old pin out. That's her. One Dewalt nail gun with a new driver assembly. Now this is the 18 gauge, not the 16 gauge. The actual 18 gauge in these Dewalt guns is actually quite good. A wee bit better quality than the actual 16. Mainly because the pin itself is a lot bigger. Bigger pin for a smaller nail. Less to go wrong with it and actually fires quite well. Generally when you get them in, it is for this reason. This driver assembly is worn out. So that's how you replace it. That's the main repair on them. Apart from that, decent wee gun. 16 gauge you would get in a lot more often for repair, but not so much these 18 gauge, 18 gauge ones. So that's her. That's the DCN 680 Dewalt gun. Up and running again. No, that way. So bad. That's her. Ready to go. Now, next up, another Dewalt. Dewalt drill this time. A DCD996. look good see in here that's the fan on there for the motor and that's not budging so she's seized but you can hear she's trying to put current across it so maybe it can be fixed that's if you can free it up and if it hasn't already burnt out the controller
very stuff that's part of the problem Prise out the gearbox housing to get this cover off. And there's the problem. Fans melted on. How am I getting that out? Not want to come off. That somehow got stuck onto the fan or the motor. That was really melted in there. Just melted onto that one. Might be able to fix that up. Sand it smooth again to give the clearance. We can get that part anyway, but again, mightn't have to. Could clean that down. Main thing is, does the motor still work? How much point in doing anything else unless it does? Look at that. See if we can fix this up. Not going to do anything fancy. Just going to take off some of that plastic. This actual fan and rotor assembly isn't actually available anyway. So this is your only option. Just make 
sure you take off any burrs that's left. Nearly looks like glue or something. Don't know how that actually managed to do that. Never seen it before. Unless some dirt or grit or something got on, bind it up on the plastic till it melted. Then whenever the drill stopped, then it solidified, stuck them together. So only that little bit there. And as you can see, this here inner piece here sticks out. It sticks into the fan, so you need to make sure that there is well cleared out. Make sure there's no leftover plastic. It's going to bind up on that again. We'll smooth it off. At least we have a working drill. So we can use it. We'll keep it nice and smooth. So this shouldn't actually be a problem. Because we've shortened that now. There should be less material there to grab this, to touch it. So this should just need to be smoothed down. Now, let's do the job. Actually just clean this down also and shorten the shoulder a little bit and just tidied up the plastic. That should be smooth enough now, it should do the job. I could order this in and replace it, but don't know if this is definitely going to work. This could be still binding up. You can't actually buy this rotor or fan on its own, so that's the only place piece you can replace. To be honest, there's not that much damage done to it, so may as well reuse this instead of waiting weeks for this to come in. Plus this boy wants it now. I don't think he wants to wait a few weeks for it. We leaf spring still down on here. And that might get us out. You can tell when it's not on, because this here hole won't line up if it's sitting too far out. You'll have a gap on here and it just won't close on far enough to cover that hole. If your lead sits down in here and your connector slots under there. Finally, we select for your light. Push all that on. Make sure nothing's going to get nipped. 
this cable just runs over the top of your forward reverse selector. And that's it. See if that does the trick. And there's steel pins in this as well. One here. And there's one there. So you have to be pressed on two. Good. Hopefully that does the trick. Look at that. That's her. You'll know as well if the fan's still rubbing. If you put your hand over the top of it and run it full speed, you will actually feel little bits of plastic or debris actually fly off and hit your hand. That's good to go. One Dewalt drill, the C's motor, fan melted on to the plastic gearbox mount. Freed up, cleaned out, ready to go. That's the DCD996 3 speed Dewalt brushless machine. Now, next up, another little Dewalt, this time an impact driver. 18 volt brushless DCF887. This is the 3 speed one. And sure, it wouldn't be a Dewalt repair video without cleaning out a Dewalt switch. Trigger switch is just not working right. Dirty inside, needs cleaned and adjusting. This is a fairly common one. I've probably done it loads of times before. But sure, we'll just do it again. First off, clean out all the dust, dirt first from the switch. That's just to stop any dirt getting into the switch whenever we open it and to help it last a bit longer once we've cleaned it out. So we'll keep this short and sweet because we have seen this before. Take off this cover, clean off the silicone here so we can pull out these wires. Don't have to take it all off, just some of it. Don't damage the wires. Unhook these big wires at the back. Give you some room. And prise up these little tabs for holding on the front cover. Total thing lifts away then. And get under the switch. Pull off your change lever. Switch this left side. Contact cleaner. Let it get clean. Let it dry. That's not as bad, but we'll clean it as well. And then 
important, but then this is the actual wiper, the potentiometer on the side for actually controlling your speed. It can get dirty, causes it to lose contact, so just give it a clean. The main problem is the little wiper itself. See how low down she is. She's been sitting there that long, been run back and forth so many times. It's actually squashed down a little bit. So it's not getting enough tension on the board. So you increase the tension. Hook your nails underneath that wheel up. And just bend it up ever so slightly. Now she's more springy. It's pressed down more on the board. Giving you a better reading. That's it. Up it slide, a little bit of silicone spray. Now you could get better lubrication for electrical components. This is all I have at the minute. So that'll do. To reinstall, spring at the top. These little yellow pieces here, for little lip seals. Push them all the way to the back. Hook on your switch lever of these wee slots and push it down, making sure these lip seals drop onto here. From there on, take your thumb, push in your spring, hook it onto the side here. That's it. For the reverse switch then. So it sits on top, pushes down. As simple as that. Quick and easy fix to keep your impactor running for a few more years. And that is the main problem with these Dewalt impactors. But a problem that can be fixed. So put, your, put your cover back on, click it into place. Sure it's all the way down. Hook on them big wires again. Fold down this little wire in loom. This little plastic clip holds them down into place. LED just twists on. Plug that back in. You're good to go. Because you stretch these wires, you have to, might have to push it up a little bit to get it into place. Line up the switch housing, actually has wee slots that line on to this here switch housing. These little wings have to go on. Drop them on. Make sure your forward reverse switch is hooked on. Drop it into place. Make sure your wire for your LED runs up along the back of this here forward reverse switch. And that's it. Lastly, leaf spring for your power switch. Your selector on top, slide them all on together. And don't forget, while we're at it, we'll just clean that too. That can start to gum up as well. That'll do. And that's it.
simple as. That should be it. Last thing. Yep, she still holds the butt. That's her. Ready to go. On Dewalt DCF887, the switch cleaned out. Right, next up for Dewalt Day. Dewalt SDS drill is the DCH273. It's a type 1. Where's she from? from 2017 Let's see what's wrong with this one the sounds are let's just hammer on hmm what's going on here Looks like it's going round, but it's not actually. Sounds good, but... She's not rotating. She's slipping and she's going round and steps. That's a bit odd. And she's even trying to rotate and hammer only. Right, this is an odd one. Let's get under this, see what's going on. Again, this is probably one you've seen plenty of times before now. But they are just a common one to come on. The only sad thing about them is all the blooming screws. Dewalt just loves screws. Very stuff. Something going on there. She's coming out back to front. Why does it come out like that?
Ah, there we go. Here's the problem. See, clips come off. So she's under tension back here. That's why she's stuck this side. Here's part of the spring clip that holds it together. So we'll have to get this housing a wee clean. These should be okay. I'll just give them a quick wipe down. We'll do that a clean and this a clean. And we'll have to just find the rest of this clip too. Should come out when we're washing it. Yeah, everything else looks okay. Right, wash this out. That's all cleaned out. Last little bit. That's the last piece stuck under the side of the housing. The rest of the wee bits was actually wrapped around the change lever, this wee yoke here. That's them all out. You only realise how many bits is left over when you're washing this stuff out. You can hear the wee pieces of metal falling onto the metal tray and the parts washer. There was quite a wee bit left inside. If you leave it like that there, leave the bits in without washing it out. You're just going to chew, chew up your gears, chew up your piston. So that's it cleaned out. And for all this work, all this stripping down, cleaning and rebuilding, for that, one little circlip. That's the part number there if you need it. Cheap little circlip that cost a few euro. That's what failed. That's what broke off. That's all that needs to be replaced. Hammer pipe. Spring. Steel ring. Then your gear. That has to be compressed down. It does work. It's awkward. You're going to need a bearing press or something for this. Or if you're careful, you could maybe do it in a vise. But you'll need something to actually press down where you can get access as well to put this clip on. So with that, putting that steel washer on top, compress this all down. So the steel washer is sitting below this lip. And then clip the C clip onto that there lip. Now what I actually use to press this on is a piece of galvanized steel pipe. There's two wee legs cut out of it. As you can see by the shape of it, I bend this quite a lot for different wee jobs, just like this on different machines. Bend the legs wider or narrower to fit the area you're working on. So I've just bent them in again just to fit this washer on top. Fits the outside, but gives clearance on the inside. So we'll use that to press this down. And make sure you're actually on this washer and not the bearing itself. If you press on this here, you're going to damage the bearing. A little too far over. to go around so far because this here gear the sleeves of the gear actually go onto splines inside the actual tool holder here so as you're going down you're going to have to twist and test it it's 
to ask me no. Ask me down fully. Get a pair of spreaders. Careful not to move it too much because she's all under tension and as she springs loose she's going to catch her fingers. And a good sharp new set of spreaders will be a far better job than these old worn out things. Sure it's clipped on all the way around. Take the tension off. And that is what the shoulder on the washer is for. So that C clip actually sits into the washer. So even if it does expand, it can expand enough to get out. You actually have to press on the washer and overcome the spring before you can take that there C clip out again. So that actually shows that the one that broke failed because it actually broke it must have snapped back here and sprung out it didn't just clip itself out it had to actually break to overcome that shoulder so we're ready to go now they didn't touch the piston and the o-ring so that should be fine we'll just top up the grease inside a little bit still got plenty of compression Make sure the outside is plenty of grease and this here hole in the middle. We'll get this back together again. Don't worry too much about the grease, we'll put that on afterwards anyway. Put your pin in here. Get your two gears together. And this wee adjuster holes to this here side and drop these on whilst putting this pin onto this hole. And I'll worry about the grease litter. And also just make sure for the selector the pin moves it connected to the back it's actually engaged so just push on your change lever and rotate it until it drops on And again, make sure your spring and washer are on this here wee con rod. Just this wee needle roller at the back. Push and drop them on. And then give everything a good taste of grease. That should hopefully be the problem solved. It's quite a common one, I see it quite a bit. These Dewalt SDS drills. They're basically just a rehash of the old Dewalt 24 volt NICAD SDS drill, which was a great machine with terrible batteries. This has better batteries, but it's basically the same machine. grand one was an 18 volt brushed machine no real problem inside of here the problem is always on the motor but now with a new motor brushless motor the motor is more reliable because it's actually brushless 
less to go wrong it doesn't overheat as much but because there's about 15 20 percent more power out of it because it's brushless that's more force and stresses on the actual internal parts in the gearbox here so because there's extra load they haven't compensated for that there she has basically all the same as the old 24 volt so the likes of the conrod brakes the actual crankshaft for driving the conrod she can shear in half the air is out the piston the grease migrates because this gets so warm whenever it's running so fast and hard the grease migrates away from the piston dries out piston needs to be replaced bits like that there happen mainly if it keeps the grease topped up it's quite good but the piston and crank can still fail and that c-clip itself on the tool holder can also fail that pops off your actual bevel gear for the rotation moves back drill still works but it won't rotate the butt hammer and all works but she just won't spin that's another common thing if we just improve the actual internals of this a wee bit better it would be a better machine but for all the things that do go wrong they are repairable and the most expensive thing being the motor is quite reliable these things seem to have to get a quare bit of abuse before the motor actually packs in on them and if you have the older brushed version or the older 24 volt don't dump it because a lot of the parts are interchangeable so if you have one of the newer brushless version or if you're investing in this newer one keep the old ones because all the parts can actually be put into it in the gearbox section but that's her ready to go Make sure your forward reverse switch is still in place and all the wires tucked in nicely. Nothing sitting out or going to get nut. And also make sure you have all the bits on it. These wee steel rollers just sit in there. There's one on the other side as well. You can just see it here. It's one of the wee bits you easily forget. You just see it as you're putting the last screw on. Just prise back this housing and get it to drop on. And that's her. There we go. Hopefully that does the trick.
Nice one. That's her. Ready to go. All that just for a C clip. <laughs>